the Chebi Hene Osare Mama for Kwabrane is demanding the presence of uh, the uh, former chairman of the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining, Professor Fimpong Boating, uh, in Chebi to show them the exact position where the illegal mining took place that resulted in the destruction of the garden of the president. Uh, in his hometown of Chebi. According to the chief, the allegation is unfounded and an embarrassment to the state of Chebi. Osarabai Makwabrani says uh, they will not rest until finality is brought to the issue. I uh, spoke to Joy News in Chebi. More on that later, but, but my colleague Elton Brobe spent the whole day uh, in, at the private residence of President Kufuado to verify claims that part of his garden was destroyed by illegal miners. In 2021, Professor Kwabana Frimpong Boateng, then chairman of the ministerial committee that was responsible for stopping illegal mining, wrote to the chief of staff upon a request by the chief of staff to furnish the office on the work of the ministerial committee and then offer a way forward to address the issue of illegal mining. Now, there... so in 2021, Professor Kwabana Frimpong Boateng, then chairman of the ministerial committee that was responsible for stopping illegal mining, wrote to the chief of staff upon a request by the chief of staff to furnish the office on the work of the ministerial committee and then offer a way forward to address the issue of illegal mining or galamse. Now, the response, which was supposed to be a confidential document, has become a matter of intense media scrutiny in the last few weeks because of the content in the report where he alleged that some government functionaries were actually uh, engaged in Galamse, frustrated the, the, the works of the anti Galamse committee. But one key issue that came out was the fact that illegal mining was actually taking place uh, in the residence of President Okufuado Achebe, uh, the president's hometown. Now, page 29 of the document makes reference to a call he received from somebody who works at the National Security Secretariat. And this call, the person said that somebody, and he described the person as the Chebi youth organizer of the MPP, uh, had undertaken illegal mining in the residence, or private residence of President Okufuado uh, at Chebi in the Eastern region. According to him, he followed up on the complaint and found out that it was indeed true and that they had to quickly mobilize some excavators and bulldozers to restore the vegetative cover of the president's garden and also reclaim the land. Now, today, we are at Chebi, the hometown of President Akufa, and indeed standing right in front of the president's private residence. Now, we're going to take a look inside the residence and to establish whether or not something of that nature actually took place. One of the households is here with me. Uh, his name is, uh, you, introduce, you, are, you, are, you are live on joining. What is your name? My name is Christopher Akrumolga. And you are a member of the household of the uh, president? Yes, please, I am. Right, so this residence that we are standing in front of, can you describe who occupies this residence? Yes, uh, the place is a, is a residential area for the president. And actually, uh, we have an old lady who stays here by name, Antifia. Mm -hmm. And then we are also here 24-7 for security reason. Can you point us to the garden, which is in reference uh, here? Yes, I may say we don't have any garden in the house, as we can all see. Uh, we can all see uh, this in the palm nut trees. That is over about 40 something years or 50 something years mm. that we all came and met. And then there are big, big trees that are here that uh, even the president himself is somebody who really likes uh, trees and those kind of. Mm. So since I have been here, nobody allows to take even a, a distance, let me say, a leaf from a tree. President, could this be the garden that Professor Fimpong Boateng made reference to that it was the place that this youth organizer of Chebi undertook illegal mining activity that destroyed part of the garden and he had to bring in excavators to restore the vegetation cover of the garden and also reclaim the land. Could this be the place that he spoke about in this document to the chief of staff? Yes, I think maybe this is all what we have as his land. You see, so we don't have a special garden that we said we have a garden here. It's a compound and then actually uh, that is all what we can see here around, you know. There's have nothing been changing in the house here. 
So if somebody is here to say uh, there, there, there was a garden and there, there, there was a, a galamse mined out, we can all see the difference between a mined out area and somewhere that is not mined. Well, so that's uh, a tour to the president's uh, private residence in Chebi to ascertain whether or not that uh, particular happening did occur. Now, um, I've been joined in studio by the National Communications Officer of the NDC, Sami Jaffe, who addressed a press uh, news conference uh, to state the party's position on what was happening in terms of uh, that uh, explosive report put out by the former chairman of the Inter Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining Process, coming out from Pong Boating. Sami, grateful that you could join us here. Thank now, you. you've seen uh, the president's private residence in Chibi. It doesn't look like anything happened. Well, I think that what the president um, is doing is that he's creating his own distortions and he's proceeding to defend his own distortions. It's like a student who goes into the examination hall mm. with his own questions and then proceeds to answer those questions. Uh -huh. How do you say because so? if you read mm. Professor Frimpong Barton's report, he did not say that illegal mining activities or illegal mining had taken place mm in the residence of the president. He didn't say so. And I want to read to you what he said verbatim so okay. that you can appreciate what is happening in Sharid and, and nothing more. Last paragraph of page 29 mm -hmm. of the 37-page report of Professor from Pumbwati on Galamse. It reads, the impunity in the Eastern region is exemplified by near unbelievable activity in Chibi. Mm -hmm. I had a telephone call from Mr. Eric Entry of the Office of the President. And he narrated that the youth organizer of the MPP in Chebi was excavating for gold in a field close to the house mm -hmm. of His Excellency, the President of the Republic. He didn't say that he was, the gentleman was excavating for gold in the house. But he if said, you if I'll you continue, I'll continue. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mm -hmm. He said, in a field mm -hmm. close to his house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we checked, it was true. Mm -hmm. Indeed, part of the garden of the president had been affected. He didn't say that this garden of the president is within the fence wall of the residence of the president. No, but the question is, so, which, which other garden? You had the, 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 the resident of the please, house. Hold on. Let's, that apart from that, they don't have any other garden. For, mm -hmm. are you going to, do you expect these houseboys of the president to expose the president? No, do you, you have, seriously do you have any do evidence? You, do you no, but mm -hmm. I'm saying that mm -hmm. let us put what Frimpon Boatin said mm -hmm. in proper context. We are creating an impression mm -hmm. that Professor Frimpon Boatin said that illegal mining was being done in the house mm -hmm. of the president. Mm -hmm. He said it was being done on a field and it close to the, the house mm -hmm. and it affected the garden. Mm -hmm. The effect on the garden he didn't see. No, but, 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 but even but, from this picture, mm -hmm. even from what is scrolling on the screen, you can describe the plantations there as a garden. So if Frame Paul Boatin says that illegal mining was being done on the field close to the president's house. Mm -hmm. And that affected the garden. Mm -hmm. You should be finding out from Frame Paul Boatin what that effect on the garden was. No, but he continues to say that. Yes. We quickly dispatched mm -hmm. a bulldozer and an excavator to the area mm -hmm. to reclaim the land mm -hmm. and vegetate it. I need not say that nothing happened to the local youth. That's all. Who caused That's how he said it. So why are we... Imputing something to Frimpong Boatin when he has not said so. No, but he said he went to vegetate the garden, didn't he? He, he didn't say he vegetated the garden. You veg read it well. Read it carefully. He said, um, we quickly dispatched a bulldozer mm -hmm. and an excavator to the area. What area? The field close to the house of the president mm -hmm. where the illegal mining was taking place. He didn't say that they deployed bulldozers and excavators to the house of but the president. When Elton spoke to some of the residents in the area, <laughs> they were also shocked please, please. to hear that this, you see, this indeed the what said something every like that happened. objective mm -hmm. and reasonable Ghanaian mm -hmm. should be calling for is what the NDC and other civil society organizations are calling for on this matter, mm -hmm. which is a bipartisan, televised, public probe into these issues. Because you can see clearly a desperate effort by the presidency and the government to cover up the illegal mining activities of elements in the government and in the ruling party. And this is one of such examples where they are claiming that Professor Frimpo Boateng has indicated in the report that illegal mining has been going on in the residence of the president when that is not the case. 
He only said the illegal mining was taking place on a field close to the president's residence and that the illegal mining had had an impact or an effect on the garden, which effect he did not define. Okay. And so until you interrogate from from Watson, you will not know what effect he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Mind you, we are not just talking about an ordinary person. We are talking about the man who was the Minister for Environment and Science mm -hmm. and the chairman of the Interministerial Committee. So you believe in a German the, the trained cardiothoracic surgeon. Mm -hmm. He gives you the name of the national security operative who called him. Any public probe will obviously have to invite this national security operative for us to ascertain whether he called him or not. And of course, the call logs will be there for us to check from, from the telcos to ascertain all these things. Okay. What the president has done does not in any way answer the serious issues contained in that report. Okay, so, and so, some of these serious issues, Kojo, include damning revelations by Professor from Pomboatin that today the Jubilee House has been turned into the, Galams, uh, uh, the headquarters for Galamse. A crime scene mm. where presidential staffers, workers at the presidency, high ups are engaging in discriminate mining, destroying our water bodies, destroying our forest reserves, uh, forest reserves, and putting all our lives, mm. you know, in jeopardy. But the, pre the presidency has sort of tried to discredit this particular report you are referring to, to say that these are they contain personal grievances by the minister who is trying to pull those across. They've sent journalists to the house there that nothing is happening. Um, even just today, we are learning that the president is asking... But what do you expect from them? When you catch a thief, mm. chances are that mm. he will deny that he's not a thief. Mm. They are only covering their tracks. No, but president but... Kufuado mm -hmm. cannot be a judge in his own cause. Mm -hmm. The Jubilee House cannot be judges in their own cause. I mean, workers at the Jubilee House. Because they all stand indicted by one of their own, the boss of the interministerial committee against illegal mining. And therefore, what you need is an independent inquiry where all of them will be interrogated. Okay? And Professor Frimpo Watson will also have the opportunity to mount his evidence okay. so that we can do an objective analysis of the evidence. If individuals who have been mentioned in the reports are established to be innocent, so be it. But if they are established to be guilty, they must be prosecuted and dealt with in accordance with law. Because, you see, what we are talking about is a national crisis. It is something that threatens our very lives. Water is life. And these trees give us the oxygen we breathe for our very sustenance as human beings. Mm. And so when you have politicians who promise to fight Galamse, putting their presidency on the line and so on and so forth, burning the excavators of legal small-scale miners, killing some in the process, turn around to engage in the most obscene form of illegal mining, mm. destroying our water bodies, destroying our forest reserves, stealing over 500 excavators that according to Professor from Paul Watson, they have sold and embezzled so, 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 the money. So, 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 I mean, then we if, cannot just sweep this for, matter for you, the capital. Do, do, I get, must be investigated. do I get an understanding that even if we show you a drone footage of the area and there's nothing like that going on, you won't believe what you see? What, 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 what were you if talking we about? Give you a, a drone footage of, of where? the current state. I mean, of the where? area Professor from Paul Watson was talking about. What area? The, the, the area around the president. Do you know the area he was talking about? He spoke of a field mm. close to the president's residence. But which field could affect the So uh, ask the Professor Frimpong that. Mm. That is why we need a probe. Okay. All right. And please, Professor Frimpong Boateng has also told you that they sent equipment there to reclaim the land. Mm -hmm. And so no drone will show the galaxy because the land has been reclaimed. Okay, thank you. The hold vegetation on. has been reclaimed. Hold on for me. Still on this particular matter, President Anako Fuado is demanding that Al Jazeera Media Network retract and apologizes for airing a documentary he considers as inaccurate and unfair. In a letter written by the Secretary to the President, Anas Antibedier, to, uh, to Al Jazeera, he described the documentary as one that contained false and unsubstantiated allegations against the president and the government of Ghana. The president is given the television network to act on this request within seven days from the date of receipt of this letter. Let's share with you details of this particular letter written to Al Jazeera. It says the documentary in question made baseless claims that the president acted as a lawyer for one Mr. Alistair Mathias and implied that the president personally benefited unlawfully from an alleged $100 million state infrastructure contract purportedly awarded to Mr. Mathias. Now, it again says in his letter dated 11th April 2023, responding to Al Jazeera's letter of 2nd April, uh, the same year, which was received on 6th April, containing these vague and defamatory allegations, the legal counsel to the president, Mr. Kou Abakai Suman, 
acting on the instructions of the president, informed Al Jazeera that the president had not been in private practice since the year 2000 and that the president had no recollection or of acting as a lawyer, either personally or through his law firm for Mr. Alistair Mathias or his company, Good Rest Resources. In those circumstances, further and better particulars were demanded from Al Jazeera to respond adequately to the allegations made in Al Jazeera's letter. Al Jazeera was thus requested to provide information on the period for which the president allegedly provided legal representation to Mr. Alistair Mathias or his company, Good Rest Resources. Further, Al Jazeera was requested to provide details of the 100 million US dollars tender for state infrastructure allegedly given to Mr. Mathias, which he outsourced and kept a percentage in offshore account, as stated in the letter, as well as information on how the president personally benefited unlawfully from the alleged 100 million US dollars tender for state infrastructure. Al Jazeera refused or failed to provide these details as requested and went ahead with the broadcast of the documentary. At the end of the documentary, a test test was shown contradicting the content of the documentary. Additionally, the subject of the documentary, Mr. Alistair Mathias, denied what he said in the documentary to Al Jazeera's investigative journalist. Now, in light of these blatant denials by Mr. Alistair Mathias and the response from Mr. Isuman, those parts of the documentary ought not to have been included because those statements were not true. So those were, you know, details of the letter to the Al Jazeera. You don't agree that to be fair, in the absence of any further particulars from Al Jazeera, the documentary should not have gone. The president can then demand for a retraction. <laughs> you are calling on on the president to you've been you've labelled him as complicit in this particular documentary. Well, this is the most laughable comment I have heard of throughout this week. Mm. This is nothing but comic relief, mm. and no objective mind who has watched the Al Jazeera Good Mafia documentary will fall for this gimmick. Look, we are talking about a documentary which has uncovered the illegal activities of a money launderer and a gold smuggler called Alistair Matthias in Ghana. And in this documentary, the guy is caught on tape confessing that he has been smuggling tons of gold from Ghana with the aid and abetment of high functionaries in this government. Mm -hmm. He says that President Kufuado is his friend and lawyer, and that he's able to do all the money laundering and go smuggling activities in Ghana because of that friendship. He goes on to say that President Kufuado's government has been awarding him inflated contracts, mm. and that he has been sharing the padded amounts on those inflate, uh, inflated contracts with his corrupt collaborators in the government. We have called for a probe. We are saying that, look, if you have nothing to hide, this is a matter that clearly brings the name of the presidency and the entire nation into disrepute. Mm -hmm. The president should be interested in clearing his name. So let's go for a probe. And then you issue this half-hearted letter, this comical letter, no, but if he, has, if he has not been, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But, but if he has not, that, he has not I, been practiced from 2000. That is a lie. Right? That is a lie. Hey, President, mm -hmm. that's a Beth's line, I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. President Ekufuado is on record to have said that Justice Yuniko Lindy and the current Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Godfrey Yabu Adame, are his proteges. And that he trained them as young lawyers in his law office, Ekufuado, Prempe, and Co. Chimbes. Godfrey Dame was called to the bar in 2003. So if President Kufuadu says he trained Godfrey Dame as a young lawyer in his chamber, how could he have stopped practicing law in 2000? This is common sense. So the fact that President Kufuadu was not engaged in active court litigation didn't mean that he was not a partner of Kufuadu Prempe and Co. That's he said one. that in this letter. Yes, he, but when he was asked whether he knew Alistair Matthias or not, he couldn't deny. He said he doesn't recollect. And what Al Jazeera did is what every media organization would do per the ethics of journalism. Okay. They duly incorporated his response mm. in the documentary. Sammy, I'm so please, it is not true. And for the records, before I leave, you should know as a matter of public record that Justice Yuniko Lindy, Justice of the Supreme Court, who President Kufuadu says is his, is his protege, who he trained in his law office, was the lawyer for this Alistair Matthias in 2014 when he was arrested in Ghana 
under the ex Mahama government. You're saying so that do on the record? I'm saying that on record. Okay, thank you very much. So that's uh, the National Communications Officer of the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, Sami.